So look, I admit that I've never been a huge fan of Kef speakers. And it's nothing personal. I respect the brand. I even respect the products that they make. But the truth is that I've never connected with any of their products on an emotional level. That is, until I brought in these new, much hyped about LS50 Metas that are sitting right over my shoulder. Suffice to say, I think times may finally be changing. So let's go ahead and check them out. All right, so here it is, the Kef LS50 Meta. And the big question is, what are the key differences between the new model and the outgoing original? Well, before we discuss that, we first need to go over the similarities because there's quite a few. Starting off, the new LS50 Metas use the same exact cabinets as the original LS50s. They also featured the same drivers and the same general driver configuration, and they also carry the same MSRP at $1,500 US dollars a pair. So the differences are going to be more on the inside. First, Kef improved the UniQ array, and then secondly, they introduced what they call metamaterial absorption technology. So what this basically is, is a large cylindrical piece located behind the driver. And the whole goal is to eliminate sound from bouncing back to the driver, thus reducing distortion. So the big question is, does it make an audible difference? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. You know what? Let's kick off this review by getting the big question out of the way first, which is, what are the key differences in sound between the original LS50 and the new LS50 Metas? Well, in my experience, it boils down to two things, the treble and the mid-range. You see, the treble on the new Meta is noticeably smoother, yet at the same time, more refined and more detailed. And it's the same story with the mid-range. The mid-range is more refined, more detailed, better balanced, and most crucially, better integrated with the high frequencies on this speaker. And these changes have major implications because the original LS50 had a different sound. It was brighter up top, the treble was more prominent, the upper mid-range was a little bit more beamy in nature, and because of this, it made for more of a polarizing listening experience. The original LS50 was more critical about the kind of recordings it would sound good with, and it was also a lot more particular about the kind of components that it would pair up well to. But because the new Metas is going to be closer to neutral in its voicing, well, now you have a speaker that's a lot easier to work with. It'll sound better across a wider variety of recording types, and it will also play better with a wider variety of components. And to me, this is what the LS50 Metas needed to be, a speaker that's basically an evolution of an already good foundation. Now, if you're not familiar with the LS50, it's totally cool, because now it's time for me to go into more detail. So when you get right down to it, what you're getting out of the LS50 Meta is a small speaker that's all about delivering a huge soundstage, an immense amount of detail, while at the same time remaining easy to listen to, and if anything, retains something of a warm tonal character. If that's what you're going for, then odds are you're going to love the sound of these speakers. And that leads me to the individual elements of his presentation, starting with its overall character. So it's really interesting because the LS50 Meta retains traits that are usually on the opposite ends of one another. For example, on one hand, they have this sharp, detailed, almost unforced sense of transparency to their sound. Now normally these are traits that you would associate with studio monitors or hi-fi speakers that take on more of a bright and thin sounding presentation. Yet when you listen to them, they're smooth very easy to listen to, and as I said before, they have just a little bit of warmth thanks to a bump in the lower mid-range and upper bass, leaving you with a speaker that has great resolution, yet at the same time is very approachable in its overall delivery. And to really hammer this home, let's go over the details starting with the treble. So the treble, in my opinion, is really the star of the show here, and I don't mind saying, I didn't expect that because what you're getting is all of this resolution and detail. I mean, if you're somebody who really likes picking out all these subtle details in your recording or you listen at low volumes and you want a speaker that sounds nice and detailed even when the music is barely playing, you're going to love these speakers. Absolutely love them. And yet what surprises me is that, especially for Kef, is that the sound isn't dry, sterile, harsh, or elevated in any way, shape, or form. And while this has become a common voicing strategy in hi-fi nowadays, I think Kef nailed this balance in a way that nobody else has at this price point. It's really quite impressive. I mean, you're getting true studio monitor levels of transparency, 
Yet at the same time, this is a speaker to where you can listen to a lot of different recordings and not fear that the speaker itself is just going to ruin the sound. Now, don't get me wrong, though. It's still very transparent. If you listen to, say, the worst alternative rock recordings, yeah, there's a chance it may still sound overly bright. But on its own, the treble is resolving, yet at the same time, very approachable. Next, let's talk about the mid-range. So the mid-range is interesting because in many respects it takes on the same general character. Highly resolving, open, clear, a lot of unforced transparency. There's good balance within the mid-range. Totally speaking, it's a little bit thin in the upper mid-range and then a little bit warm in the lower mid-range, but I think this is smart voicing because when it's a little bit thin, that gives the sound some depth. And then when it's just a little bit warm in the lower mid-range, that's what helps to give the sound some body, especially with a compact monitor. And overall, I think it's very tonally balanced. Look, it's not going to sound like a big floor standing speaker in the mid-range, but what you do get is something that's satisfyingly full and balanced. And next, let's talk about the bass. So the bass is interesting because when you look at the website, you'll notice that the negative 3 dB point is at around 79 hertz. Now, a lot of people looking at the specs would say, oh, well, that's not very good. But I think what's happening here is Kef is being unusually honest because even though it's not going to give you thunderous bass output, I mean, it is a small speaker after all, what it does give you is very confident. And I would say tonally, it's at the confluence between speed and warmth. There's a little bit of body there, but otherwise it's a very quick sounding low end presentation. But the big thing here is that you can crank the volume on the speaker and you don't have to worry about the bass becoming too bloated or just giving out too quickly. I mean, this is a speaker that again, sounds confident for what it is, even though again, it doesn't sound like a big floor standing speaker. Next, let's talk about the imaging. The imaging on the LS50 Metas is just insane. It's almost like this wall of sound, except instead of it being just this wall of sound that's indiscriminate, I mean, it's highly precise. It's very easy to pick out what's going on in the sound stage. It has a locked in center image. It's really good. I mean, this really embodies the advantage of a two-way monitor. The driver integration on the LS50 Meta is very, very good. The off-axis performance is good. I do feel in the off-axis, it's easier to pick out the high-frequency information than when you're sitting just directly in between the speakers, but it's still, nonetheless, very good. Dynamic output is also respectable. Look, it's a compact speaker, right? It's not gonna be visceral, but the ability to go from quiet passages to loud is very good. And the dynamic heft from it is respectable from a monitor size. But again, just keep things in perspective. Small speaker, right? So ultimately, look, this is a great, well-rounded performer. I didn't think I would actually like it so much. Is it perfect? No. Now, I already touched on some of the imperfections, but the only thing I want to mention here that's more subjective in nature is one of the things that I've not really liked so much about Kef speakers is they have this, hey, look at me, look what I can do type of sound to it. And while the LS50 maintains some of those traits, I don't really care because it's just so technically accomplished and enjoyable to listen to. So I think they're going in the right direction here. But to really hammer this home, let's go over some comparisons. So to keep things nice and fair, I'm only going to compare the LS50 Meta to other compact speakers in the same general price range. So with that out of the way, let's talk about how they stack up to the Dynaudio Evoque 10s. Now the Dynaudio Evoque 10s retail for $1,600 a pair, whereas the LS50 Metas are a little bit less expensive at $1,500 a pair. Now I think the best place to begin is to first summarize the overall sound of each speaker. The Dynaudio Evoque 10s take on this dark and warm sounding presentation. They're designed to sound relaxing to where you come home at the end of the day and you just relax into the music. And they don't project in a forward way. Instead, their sound is going to be limited to the physical location of the speaker. Whereas the LS50 Meta by direct comparison, yes, even though it does have a slightly warm tonal character to it, it's going to sound very different. It projects in more of a forward way by direct comparison. It has a sharper, more clearly defined sound and is going to be for somebody who wants a more technically well-rounded presentation. And that leads me to the individual elements of their presentations. And honestly, guys, there's not a lot to say here because the Kef LS50 is just a much better, well-rounded speaker. The 
treble, for example, is going to be more detailed, yet at the same time, easier on the ears. The mid-range is going to sound cleaner. The bass is going to be quicker. The horizontal imaging is going to be wider. The driver integration is going to be superior to what you get on the Dynaudios. The low-level listening performance is going to be better. The performance at higher volumes is going to be better. So you kind of get the idea here. But the Dynaudio Evoque 10s, they have some strengths going for them as well. They have a bigger sense of scale within the mid-range and in the bass. Not much. They're both compact monitors, right? They sound like what they are. But still, for the sake of argument, they do have a bigger sense of scale. And plus, the vertical imaging is going to be superior on the Dynaudios. Now you think in this comparison that this is just one-sided. The LS50 Metas, they got it hands down. But this is where subjectivity comes into play. If I personally had to choose between one or the other, I would struggle a lot. While I really enjoy the sound of the LS50 Meta, I think the Dyna Audio Evoque 10s, even though they're not as technically proficient, have some charm to them that is just fun to listen to. So that just goes to prove that even though something could be better in many respects, doesn't mean it's what everyone is going to prefer. It just depends on what it is you're looking for. So I got one more comparison for you all, and then we're going to work on wrapping this review up. You know, this may be one of the most interesting comparisons that I've ever published in a review because what I'm essentially doing is comparing the old with the new. In one corner, we have the Kef LS50 Meta at $1,500 a pair, and then in the other corner, we have the Falcon Acoustics LS35A MoFi Edition at $2,000 a pair. And what makes this so cool is that the LS35A was the original small speaker that was meant to deliver really good sound. And the Falcon Acoustics LS35A is a painstakingly spec by spec spec recreation of the original LS35A that you could have purchased back in the 1970s. And to make this even more interesting, the KEF LS50 Meta derives this model name from, of course, the LS35A, and plus, KEF was the one who designed the drivers for the LS35A. So as I said, this really is a comparison between the old and the new. And the big question now is, well, how do they stack up and does the old guy even have a chance against the young whippersnapper, the Meta? And look, this is where I get a whole bunch of thumbs down because the answer is no, no it doesn't. I mean look, I love the LS35A and I've made no bones about that here at this channel. But by comparison, the LS50 Meta is a significantly better all around product. I mean, I don't even know where to begin here. The driver integration is a lot better. The treble is far more resolving. In fact, the entire presentation is a lot more detailed and resolving, yet the treble is also a lot smoother. We have the bass performance, which is a lot stronger. It's going to be quicker sounding and just better in every single way. We have a speaker with the Meta that's more dynamic. It lays down a wider soundstage. It's easier to work with. It sounds better across a wider variety of music. It sounds better across many different types of components. It's even easier to work with inside of most room environments. The only advantage that the LS5A has is the mid-range. If you're really sensitive to tonal accuracy or tonal purity, specifically when it comes to human speech and when it comes to certain instruments like string instruments, then there's a good chance you may still prefer the sound of the LS35A because it does that so well. And when you pair up the LS35A to the right amplifier, it creates a very engaging sound that even though the meta is technically better, like I said, in pretty much every way, you may still prefer the sound of the LS35A. And this is, once again, one of those, one of those times excuse me, to where subjectivity comes into play. But that's going to be my take on this comparison. So what I'm going to do now is to give you all some positioning tips about the LS50 meta, and then I'm going to wrap up this review. So let's get to it. So this section is going to be pretty short because honestly, guys, there's not a whole lot you have to do to get consistent performance out of these speakers. So first, let's talk about positioning. I feel like they sound best when you spread them far apart and you have the speakers pointed directly out into the room with little to no toe-in. Now, in this configuration, they're going to give you a warm and laid-back sound. If you don't like that, maybe you want more of a direct and lively sound, all you have to do is point the speakers more towards your listening position and then there you go. When it comes to spacing between a wall boundary, I feel like you don't need to give them a whole lot of room to breathe. A solid foot 
foot or more from any wall boundary is ideal for the quickest base, but honestly, you could get away with placing them as close as six inches and still get fairly decently quick base output. Now, of course, if you have to place them directly against the wall, I believe they come with some ports, and that's only for those of you who are very particular about base speed and precision. Moving on, let's talk about equipment matching. So I've heard a lot of people say that these speakers need a lot of power, and I don't think that's necessarily true. It just depends on what you want out of them. So if you're in a small room, for example, and you listen at moderate to low volumes, it doesn't even matter the kind of music you listen to, these speakers are going to be fine with a tube amplifier. I would say anywhere between 12 to 20 or 30 watts should be fine so long as the tube amplifier has good iron. Now for most other people, yes, a good 50 to 100 watts is where you will likely want to be. You'll probably want more power than 100 watts if you listen at like crazy loud volumes, which if you do, a set of compact monitors probably isn't best for you anyway. Now when it comes to the type of equipment you can use, Honestly, you don't need to fret over whether or not a Marantz or a Denon or whatever is going to be the best match. These speakers, again, are going to deliver a consistent sound. If you're just really in the middle and you don't know where to go, go with something that's voice neutral, like an IOTA VX SA3 at around $550, or something like the Marantz PM8006, same thing, it's balanced sounding, or the Parasound Hint 6 if you really want to go high end. The only other thing I need to mention here is these speakers do scale incredibly well well. So do not be afraid to pair them up to integrated amplifiers or electronics that retail for as much as three to even $5,000. Believe me, they have the resolution that can easily show off what you get as you spend more money. Anyway, that is going to be it for these speakers. So let's go ahead and wrap up this review. So I'm going to end this video in the same way that I started it with a controversial yet downright honest confession. Because it's true, it's been many years since I genuinely enjoyed the sound of a Kef speaker. Now don't get me wrong, I understand why so many people out there like the sound. The dynamic output, the detail, the imaging, all understandable. The problem that I've had with their speakers has more to do with how they portray the treble, the mid-range, and just the tone as a whole. Which is why when I brought into LS50 Metaphor Review, I didn't really expect much, right? I only did it because it's a popular speaker. I knew it would be an important reference point, partly because so many of you are going to be asking me about it. So when I listen to them, yes, they still sound like a Kef speaker, right? There's not a dramatic difference between the LS50 and the LS50 Meta. But the subtle differences that I did notice have really big implications because what's really going on here is that KEF is at this critical turning point in their technology. They're at this point to where they're still able to capitalize on what their main goals are, right? Detail, this big sound, I mean, they do that very well, but now they're starting to eliminate the things that people like me have historically not really liked about the presentation so much. And if they continue on this path, well, that just makes me really excited because it kind of reminds me of where Klipsch was just a few years ago. They also reached this point to where they started to really emphasize what their products were good at while at the same time taking care of the things that earned them so much criticism through the years. So ultimately, the LS50 Meta is a speaker that's better than I expected it to be. Now, is it the best speaker that exists in the market today for $1,500? Well, no, I don't really believe that because you know me, guys. I don't believe there's such a thing as best. It just depends on what you want. But what I will say is that for $1,500, for the kind of performance that you get out of the LS50 Meta, I think they're definitely worth every penny, and they're going to become my new reference point for just what is technically possible for something at this price range because they really do embody all the strengths one would expect from a compact monitor. And it really does add to the really to the difficult question of, do you buy a really good set of monitors and then add a sub or two, or do you spend just a little bit more money and go with the tower speaker? For a while, it was starting to lean more and more towards tower speakers, but I think the LS50 Metas have now shifted the dialogue back to just being controversial once again. So anyways, that is going to be my take on this speaker. It is really, really good, and I look forward to seeing what you guys think after you try it out for yourself. Anyways, that is going to be my take. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.